Welcome to Electric Dreams, your regular podcast about electric vehicles, sustainable tech and news. Brought to you by the Yorkshire EV Club, now with a new website. You can find us at yorkshireevclub.co.uk. Welcome to episode two. My name is Darren from the Yorkshire EV Club and I'm sat here today with my good friend. Hi there, I'm John. Um, Yes, I'm also part of the Yorkshire EV Club, although I do not drive an EV. Shock horror. But the good thing is, in Yorkshire, we accept anyone, even dirty hybrid drivers. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true. I, I drive a hybrid at the minute. It's just because I'm not ready yet. That's all it is. That's all it is. I, I am, I'm well in. My mind mind and soul are all in, in there, just yet to embrace it in the, uh, you know, in the physical aspect. Well, we're happy to tell you, folks, we've got a really packed show for you today. So we're going to launch right into it. So, folks... You'll recall that in the last episode we talked about I had an upcoming visit to the uh, Electric Ve- Vehicle Festival in Gaydon. And I'm happy to say I had a great time there. Brilliant. I saw your photographs on um, on your Facebook. You sent you, you sent me a picture while you were there with a uh, leaning on um, Derek Trotter's uh, yellow. What is it? In, um, I can't remember. They call the three wheeler. Yeah, little Robbie Reliant. That's thing, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that was that an EV one or was but, that part of the? Uh... Well, as well as the EV <laughs> festival, there's there's the the British Motor Museum there, and for anyone that's not been, right. I would highly highly recommend it. I've, uh, I've, I've seen it before. I'm aware the museum's there. I've driven past it once. I think I was on the way down to somewhere like High Wycombe or somewhere down south. But, um, but yeah, driving past it, um, you see the signs on the motorway. And um, I think the actual f- only pictures I've ever seen of it, apart from the one you sent me, was on, um, it was on TV. Um, uh, I forget what it's called. It's uh, Car SOS. They had a, a bunch of people that went down there. And I, I keep thinking, I'd have to go down there one day. I'd have to go down there. Lo and behold, would you beat me to it? <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, I, I was there with, with the wife, Julie, and uh, we went around this museum. And I'll be honest, that you got cars there from the 1890s up to the present day. And it was, if you like your, your cars, it was amazing. How many electric ones? With, with, without, obviously, the, the whole EV festival, were there any electric ones yeah, in the, the museum? You know what? They had a whole section on, a little section on electric vehicles. Uh, there was an I-Pace in there. Oh, brilliant. As it should be. And a little old Leyland electric car, a little cute little thing. Ah, yeah. What well, was it? Was it in the in the last episode? Uh, I can't remember whether whether we put that out on air or not. But yes, I was talking about there was a, a photograph. It looked like a, a little squashed car with a very sharp nose. That's exactly what it was. It was the electric car. In fact, I'm going to give give something away now. The year I was born, 1970, this car came out. The Crompton Leyland electric car. Crompton Leyland electric. I mean, to my to my eye, John. I mean, just this again appealing to older podcast listeners. Sorry, kids. Uh, this is looks to me like a squashed Vauxhall Viva. I was going to say exactly the same. I'm, I'm sure the front of it looks very Vauxhall esque, but the back of it and the side, it just looks like I don't know. It's it's like someone's got a marshmallow, carved a car out of it, and then squished it. That's the only <laughs> the only description I can give of it. To be fair, without without uh, I don't know. Without being mildly insulting to it, it's, it's a hideous looking car, but it was it's a, electric. It was a rainy day and there was a canteen in there as well. We, first thing me and Julie did was get out of the rain and we had a wander around there for a good hour, hour and a half. Can't recommend it highly enough. You know, really say, go there, see it. So that was the first part of our day. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, you talk about the first part. What was your second part? So then obviously was the reason we went was the EV festival. Of course. And uh, I'm a bit like a kid at a candy store to be honest with you <laughs> I um I just all those EVs it's just fantastic you had a whole row of BMW i3s a whole, whole row of them yeah but all the there was lots of clubs there and um, that were all sort of um got their own little marquees and there was an i3 club so you got all that everyone was lining their cars up oh uh, right I was about to say this wasn't just the world's biggest i i3 festival it was a full-on EV yeah but I don't know if you rem- remember us saying in the next step the last episode rather that um <clears throat> uh, we'd seen James and Kate looking at the, the MG. Mm, yes, yeah, we saw the video, didn't we? And I actually saw James down there, <laughs> and he was stood by the M- the MG, and we had a good chat about it, I had a good look at it up close and personal, and I was really impressed by that car. No, oh, it's a shame. It's a shame I couldn't make it down there. I'll be honest with you. I think if I was uh, if I was at a loose end, I would have liked to have gone down there. It's a it's a shame. I I feel a bit inadequate. I'm doing an EV podcast. <laughs> I don't own an EV, and I haven't been to the EV uh, the EV festival like yourself. I feel like I'm just just filling space here. But anyway, if that's the case, I apologise. <laughs> 
well, what what people don't know is that you're the technical consultant and you're the you're the guy who puts this together and makes it sound as fantastic as it does. Well, well, well that's very kind of you, with help, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so as, yeah, as well as as well as James, um, James and Kate, his wife, we, we, myself and Jules had a chat too. We met lots of people from the clubs. We had D Roberts and, and Peter. Uh, we saw Leanne and Neil and lots and lots of other people. I just want to say, you know, and the. There were Yorkshire EV Club members down there. There was Ed and there was Paul and his wife. Great. You know, Ian, obviously Ian Tattersall, co-founder of the club. We had a great day. You know, there was there was Paul Middlecott, again, who I mentioned last time, who put the whole thing on. He, uh, he did a really good job. He's obviously done it justice then. The hype was worth it. Yeah, and you know, there's so many cars. Like I say, I just I made some notes here, so I'm just going to read like a, from a script for a minute. But I saw Twizzies, i3s, a VW E Golf, VW E Up, a Nissan EMV 200, Zoe's, a Renault Fluence, which is is a very rare EV, Ooh, a, an yeah. older EV. Yeah, do you know what? You, when I was first looking at just talking about the Fluence, when I was first looking at EVs and, and you know seeing what was available and this kind of stuff, what I could buy, there was the Renault Fluence on there. For shame, I thought it was the newer one. And then you look at the picture and you think, oh, it's styled a bit like late nineties, early two thousands. And then it turns out that that's what it is. But it's weird how that that car's come along, and yet I'd never noticed it until now. It's strange, isn't it? Being an electric car, you'd think there'd be a lot of hype about it, but yeah, but it kind of just snuck in, didn't they it? They tended to release them and forget about them. Really, mm. it was like they were trying to tick a box. I think back in the day, weren't they? Yeah. Although to be fair, they're talking about the Volkswagen now. It, I, I don't think there is any other car more suitable for a Yorkshire EV club. The VW E up. E up. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, coming from a southerner, I hope that's not as insulting as it might have seemed. <laughs> <laughs> but that, it, was, it was an impressive little car, and the guy, the guy said, you know, it's, uh, he paid quite a good whack for it. I'm not going to give that out on air, but he, um, yeah, it was, it's a, not a cheap car and quite a small battery, but yeah, lovely little drive. He says it's a great car. As long as it's built like a typical VW, to be fair, I think you're going to get a good car. I mean, I've, I've owned a, I've owned a, a VW and a Skoda in the past. You know, I think they're more or less the same cars with a different badge on. But e- even though, yes, well, for whatever reasons, I don't own those cars anymore. They were brilliantly built cars. They, the inside of the car was solid. And I think if you're going to get that in an EV, that's that's definitely a plus one. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah, very well built car. Yeah, I was impressed with it. So as well as you know all the clubs being there, and Paul Paul had a great idea. He did an award ceremony for some of the people there, and um, another person I met on the list of people, great friendly people I met was Craig Tong of the RZOC, the the Zoe Club. Oh yeah, um, he won an award for sort of achievements too. I think I, I, th- I think that's well deserved to be fair. Yeah, the, you know the Electric Achievement Award. He, he runs that club. He's been personally helpful to me with with the EV events. You know. Great guy. Um, Best EV club went to Sussex EVs. All right, okay. Uh, And again, Neil, who runs that, he is, you know, he's been really helpful to our club, helped me when I was, you know, he's always helping anyway. And But I think what I'm getting at, really, I'm name dropping all these, what I really mean is great sense of community, and that's what I took from the day. Um, Everyone was really welcoming to Julie, who's, you know, who's there, being bored by EVs, you know. (laughs) So, no. Yeah, great time had by all. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a little bit of cross referencing to uh, to someone else's podcast, but it's um, um, just uh, uh, everybody knows of Martin Lee's podcast. He's a uh, you know he's, he's he's a bigger radio man than I will ever uh, claim or, or hope to be. But um, but yeah, I think he's talking about the the fact that um, when EVs um, you know when when they were rare, there was a bit of the word he uses is camaraderie and. Although his question is his question of the week, again, I'm talking about him, but his question of the week this week is, is there still a big camaraderie amongst EV uh, drivers or is it just run of the mill? I think it's still very much there. But because I'm, I'm not quite into the whole uh, EV driving thing yet, um, it's the camaraderie that's driving me in so to speak if you know what I mean it's it's not a niche it's, it's still quite a niche thing having an electric car but people know what it is now and it's yeah, it's a community r- rather than a, a niche thing, I'd say. Yeah, I think like uh, like the old... Remember the VW Beetle meets? Mm. It feels like that. I it's, personally don't, but... Well, yeah, I, I, I'm I, sure I, my dad would. <laughs> I wasn't really a, a Beetle owner, but what, what I'm getting at is you'd get all these people with this one interest together mm. and they'd have something to show off, their cars or whatever. And, and it's the same here, really. It's the same kind of 
vibe for one yeah, of the Yeah, I, I guess everybody's got got a different reason to show off the same thing, whether it be because they've just bought it or they've made some adjustments to it or it's one of a kind or maybe it's just, wow, look at this kind of thing. And I'm really glad you mentioned Martin Lee because I wanted to, he actually was kind enough to mention our, this, this humble podcast and, you know, Martin's a, sort of, for me, is the... Uh, the benchmark for all podcasts you know he, he teaches people how to do podcasts and yeah for him to give us a mention martin thank you very much that's really thank you, appreciated martin. so i think i've we've talked enough about the festival it was it was a great festival and um if you want to catch up on it people have been encouraged to uh, upload their photos to at new technology y2 or the which is the twitter or the facebook which is at ev fest one so by all means have a look at that see what a great day and come along next year I think I might be wrong but I think it's around about the 20th of August next year it's planned for so keep an eye out for that definitely get that one on your calendar this section's all going to be about opinions I suppose we could almost change our name to EV Opinion however that name has already been taken by a cracking YouTube channel that I encourage you all to watch (laughs) and if you're listening from the future hello Ryan what I'd like to talk about is I'm going to swear now and apologise, kids. <gasps> I'm going to swear. I'm going to say a few words that might upset a few listeners, but bear with us. Are you ready? Go on, Darren. Toyota self-charging hybrid technology. Oh, there's no such thing, Darren. No so, such thing. So that's what I'd like to talk about. Much like uh, <laughs> Robert Llewellyn this week, uh, who had a bit of a rant on talk radio, and rightly so. Um, I'd like to have a little bit of a rant about Toyota. And this is nothing new. It's been going on for ages. But there might be people listening to this podcast who don't follow this. So I'd, just, I'd like to touch on it because you know, it's frustrating. And yeah, we'd like to, just like to uh, see where we go with this. Go on then. So, what, do you, what do you got? Well, the way Toyota have <laughs> been marketing their um, their mild hybrids, for for want of a better term, uh, hmm. the whole self charging thing. I mean, this has happened to me, and there'll be other EV drivers out there screaming. And, you know, the mother in law came up to me, said, "Oh, what do you think of these new self charging hybrids?" And I have to stop myself from going into a full on, full blown rant over <laughs> Sunday dinner at mum in law's. <laughs> oh dear! No, I, I can I can understand. Um, you're going to be telling me next that this whole self-charging hybrid technology is exactly what's in my Honda Insight at the moment. Yes. So it's a petrol car. With a tiny little battery that you don't yeah. plug in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like I've got, like a mild hybrid. And it's charged exclusively exclusively by... Petrol. A petrol engine. And, you know, when you see these adverts and you've got this cool customer and he's driving past all these old-fashioned cars and it, it's like a timeline that's going through all the time and uh, he's even there's an ev driver stood there looking at his watch because you do that don't you ev drivers you plug in and then you stand there looking at your watch don't you that you, you all do that you all sit there you don't go for a coffee or or a wee or anything like that you just stand there looking at your watch and being very impatient that you've had to plug your car in you haven't reconciled to the fact that your ev you know it's plugged in for a set amount of time, so you go and do something useful. No, you stand there looking at your watch. Or, or you see the other advert where they've got the uh, the cobwebs on the charging units. Yes, of course. Yeah, right. Um, I think the <laughs> point is, really, that, that they're trying to say, they're trying to suggest that theirs is the way forward. This older technology is the way forward, and quite frankly... Yeah, it, it, it's... Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a bit rude, isn't it? Really, for a word, but I mean, it puts into perspective though that the the, uh, the date on the back of the registration number of my mild hybrid is 2010. Being that we're now 2019, this technology's already more than nine years old. Been around a while, I, I think. Yeah. In fact, 20 years old, really. That some of the early hybrids. Hmm. You know, they were thereabouts, I think. Yeah, I, I can't remember when the original Honda Insight was out. I drive a, a, a Model 2, um, or whatever you want to call it, second edition Insight for, for the enthusiasts that go, oh, he's got an Insight. No, no, I wish I had one of them because they look brilliant. But no, I drive a, a version 2, uh, which is 2010. Which, to be fair, you know, I bought it because at the time it was the right car, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into the whole history of it. But um, 
Yeah, it just seems a bit weird how how Toyota are banging out these um, these these adverts. I mean, I, I I know the advert you mean. I've seen the one where they're uh, where you've got the um, the charger covered in cobwebs. I remember yeah. seeing that on TV. Yeah. But it's it's it just seems a bit weird where they're trying to advertise an old technology today. Is it the fact that they've built absolutely tons of these, maybe about five or ten years ago, and they can't shift them quick enough? Or is there something else more sinister? Or is it just I don't know let, let their me, opinion? Who knows? Let, let me be. Um let me just set something straight. I'm not here to, to knock hybrids. I think they're a great transition car for people going full electric. Um, I, I, I really do. I think they're fine. John's car is a great car. What my, my issue is with Toyota's sort of aggressive marketing, their corporate strategy, they're going down the mild hybrid route and they want to diss everything else. And it's the negative angle they've gone. Instead of saying, look how great our car is, they've compared it to EVs and it's kind of a we're better than you um, we've got the best idea for the way forward and quite frankly I don't like that confrontational adversarial way of going about it no and I, I think that's a fair point to make to be fair I mean a, a, car, a car is a car whatever it's powered by it's a car but the fact the fact that they kind of segregate I don't know they're, it's like they're trying to knock a good thing but what, what's happened is Why would you, they? you've got a load of sort of prominent or, or certainly popular uh, Twitter uh, EV drivers who every time they see a Toyota advert they pounce on it and start dissing it and and a lot of them <laughs> do it with good grace good humour they don't swear they do it with class as a guy called Plug Seeker and if you're listening Colin you know love your work he's a great guy and he always does it whenever he has you know a disagreement with anyone on Twitter it's always reasoned calm and measured and he's he's been one of the guys who's like always pulling up Toyota, just trying to get them to outline the facts and around they dodge and they weave. And I'm just printing off something that me and John have got in front of us now. <laughs> it's a brilliant piece of work. I love it. I love I, it. I apologise that I don't know what source it came from. I didn't wasn't really clear on the page I got it from. But basically, someone's done a skit on a Toyota advert, and we've got the hashtag "Stop the self charging lies." <laughs> And basically, go if you want to read a couple of these out, John. I think it's brilliant. Um, obviously, you, you won't be able to see it, but on the left-hand side is a nice, shiny new Toyota, you know, pretty pretty nice-looking car, as, as whatever you call it. And it says at the top in big letters, Toyota self-charging hybrid technology, helping you feel like you're doing your bit for the cli- uh, you're doing your bit for climate change, when actually you're just driving a petrol car. And then underneath it goes on to talk about the highlights. And, and the, the first two on here, I think, are great. I mean, the highlights. You've got the 1.8-litre uh, hybrid automatic engine. Helps you pay roughly three times the price to drive the same distance as someone in an electric car or a plug-in hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> but the next one was my favourite one. Was the, uh, the um, Obviously, this is all just taken with a pinch of salt, but it's the Toyota Touch 2 multimedia system. You think, oh, OK, what's this about? Allows you to deaden the sound of your petrol engine that is exclusively powering your <laughs> self-charging hybrid. <laughs> and, then, and then they really go to task on it. Air conditioning so you can blow petrol and diesel fumes on the faces of... Of your children, <laughs> oh, but the, the best one. I like this this one here. The, 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 the reversing camera, so you can watch your fossil fuel burn as you drive, and that that to me, well, that was the best one out of a lot of them. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's styled exactly like a, a huge great uh, Toyota um, billboard advert that you see down the side of a motorway or roundabout, that kind of thing. From a distance, it looks like a Toyota advert, but you look at it and it's obviously a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a mock, it's a comedy mock, but it's. It's brilliantly and tastefully done. So remember, folks, use the hashtag Stop the Self Charging Lies and uh, spread a little joy. So I'm, 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 you know, I'd also printed off. Uh, we've got a lengthy Reddit discussion here. How why is it that things on the internet just go absolutely from crazy? It's just, I think you get the point. <laughs> um, Toyota, you really haven't done yourselves or your reputation any favour by going about it that way. Talk about your product, how good it is. Don't diss the competition. That's a very, very... That's day one sales training. Do not diss the competition. Right, I'm just looking through something that um, was spotted on Tesla Arty, which we've uh, which we printed out here. Um, yeah, uh, this is this is the, um, the latest news from them that uh, Teslas and other electric vehicles are now being banned from various drag racing strips uh, in the US. Uh, well, are they now? That's interesting. It's, it's a bit, 
it's a bit weird to be frank because I thought that um, the whole um, you know to, to, to those that like drag racing and the sports and uh, boat sports that kind of thing I thought the EV's biggest thing in, in sport was meant to be the fact that they go from zero to a million in a snap of a finger you know they're, they, they're quick off the mark in short so you would have you would, I don't know personally I, I'd expect that to be uh, uh, drag racing territory uh, an, an EV but um, apparently not well, it's massive in America, drag racing, isn't it? It's a whole, you know, it's a whole Friday night thing. And I, I've seen lots of YouTube videos of uh, of Teslas. Just, yeah, you know, there's cars that are worth ten times the price of the Tesla doing the race, and they just <laughs> humble them, don't they? For yeah, I, I mean, my my first um, not experience, wrong word, but the first time I ever saw an EV uh, being demonstrated for its um, for its acceleration time was a couple of years ago um it was it was when top gear it was the first of the new top gears um those of you uh, obviously i imagine most of our listeners are going to be in britain who are going to know what i'm on about but um but yeah um the, oh, was what, that the one with rory reed yes yeah. yes yeah basically he took a tesla and, and drove around the united states and he was just testing you know uh, you know doing a proper test of, of a car if you like you know how how far does it go how long does it take to charge and all this kind of stuff and um and near the end of the uh, the trip around the united states he uh, he went to i don't know if it was a drag strip or whether it was just an organized I road think race it was or, a drag strip yeah but but yeah he was he was there and you got all these massive impressive looking machines you know with back wheels the size of a small house that kind of thing Absolutely, I don't know, just just blowing fumes like you wouldn't believe, but the most amount of power kicking out. Anyway, you can see where this is going. Long story short, he turned up with a Tesla. I don't know which model it was, um, but uh, yeah, he just basically said, right, okay, well, who wants to race against me? And they said, ah, oh, yeah, go on, we'll, we'll beat you. And obviously, they've not seen an EV um, off the mark before. And, and needless to say, the Tesla just, just floored it and gone in in no noise at all it went so this drag racer was was pouring out smoke and tire screeching and everything and this tesla just literally went pew, gone yeah, and yeah. and it absolutely blew the socks off of him and then they started oh oh, oh dear okay right we're, we're into competition here anyway so this leads me up to the point i was i was going to make um just took a long time getting there but but e- evs this is their territory if there's one good thing uh, that motor um motorsports fans are probably going to want to well, pick up on you know looking at the plus points of EVs, EVs rather. That, yet, like I said, they they go like hot poo off a shovel. If I'm going to self censor, but you know what I mean. You would have thought that drag racing strips would be ideal ground for them, but no, apparently not. In um, uh, this is the uh, this is just looking at the the printout I've got here. Yes, it's uh, all credit to the Texas Motor Speedway, where they've got obviously different um rules for different cars that are allowed on the strip you know um uh, drag radials allowed in all classes i don't even know what that means but anyway things like uh, drag slicks are outlawed uh, sorry they're allowed in outlaw and black smoke warrior divisions again i have no idea what it means but you know i guess it probably means something to drag racing um uh, participants blah 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 lots of smoke lots of uh, da, da, da. and then right at the bottom electric vehicles are not allowed just in very Blunt, obvious. Thou shalt not enter with an EV. Oh, and I've I've picked up um, <laughs> I've picked up on this is Texas, is it? And what's yes. Texas famous for, John? Uh, oh, I couldn't possibly say. Um, um, Texas Instruments calculators, yes, yeah, calculators. Yeah, that and lots uh, oh, of oil. that and oil. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> and interested, I, I, won't, I don't suppose that a Tesla would be allowed to enter a black smoke warrior division anyway. There's not much smoke coming out of a Tesla, is there? Yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's a whole other conversation. But there are people who actively tune their their um, their, their fossil fueled motors to kick out as much black soot as possible. And to be frank, I, I, I'd rather, I don't know, I, I'd, I'd rather not. So how do how do they <laughs> justify this then, John? What, 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 how do they justify um, it? Yeah, uh, well, it says on here. Uh, again, a reading. I'm just just briefly going over what I've got printed in front of me here from from uh, Tislerati. Uh, uh, qu- uh, Quoting here, uh, the reason for the exclusion is in the event of a crash and possible resulting fire, our emergency services currently do not carry the specific equipment required to suppress EV fires. Um, oh, shit. <coughs> oh dear! Oh, that that that! I'm going to have to stick the parental advisory sticker on the front of this podcast. Bit now. of a cough there. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it, in a way you can kind of see their point. Maybe they're just being worried about it, and you're not people like for stirring up worrying okay, so- and that kind of stuff. But if there is any threat to their very way of life, something different comes along, get rid of it. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's it, what it looks it's like It's not me. as if there's any other dangers around there, like cars full of combustible fuel, for example. You know, it's no, 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 ex- exactly that. I mean, I mean I, I've mentioned before, I watch Formula One, and you see uh, problems when uh, Formula One cars catch fire. Um, not so much nowadays, obviously, but previously, when, there, when fuel catches fire, you know when fuel catches fire, especially when it's petrol. But, but a battery, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a battery on fire, but I imagine... It wouldn't go up in a huge, great tower inferno of, of flames that maybe liquid fuel would. Uh, who knows? But, yeah, it yeah. just seems like a bit of a cop-out, really. Yes, yeah. there's going to be a fire. And the fact that it's but... Texas, you know. And <laughs> I, I bet in California, where they're, they, um, they're always, obviously um, probably a lot more tests. I wonder, I, de- I would imagine, I may be wrong, I would imagine that they, they probably do allow Teslas. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what? I, I'm probably going to see if I can make that one of my one of my things. If if I win a hundred million pounds on the lottery, how much they they play for now? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to build a drag strip exclusively for EVs, just but, just to see what comes out of it. You know, I might have three people a year turn up. I might have none, but it exists. But can you imagine? It's like you know, it's uh, it's I don't know downtown Leeds just just picking a city out and yeah they start applying these rules to all the street <laughs> races all the kids are there they've got the souped up uh, I nearly said Vauxhall Novas and, and show my age, age again now. But the souped up <laughs> courses and Astras and what have you and, uh, and some guy comes along and he's got a Nissan Leaf with uh, with a bit of Westwood and a bit of Dan Prodigy bouncing out the speakers <laughs> and he pulls up and the lads uh, they turn around the baseball caps and say sorry mate you can't play just a quick question. Have you ever driven in Leeds? You do realise the entire city just moves at no more than 20 miles an hour. Having any kind of street race in Leeds well, I was thinking should more be of, applauded. I think you're more of a 3am th- <laughs> 3 kind of thing, you know, on, on some, some far-flung uh, retail park. <laughs> i just got to quickly add, by the way, I do not condone street racing on public roads. No, don't do it. It was a joke. OK. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> in case anyone starts going legal on me. But you can play Prodigy if you're on this side leaf. You've had permission to do that. I completely endorse but that. only loudly. So we're just thinking about wrapping up, folks. And uh, I just wanted to say, I had an interesting email in my inbox this morning. I just want that this place deserves some love, really. Um, in Milton Keynes, which is, is known as the sort of charging hub of the UK, they have lots and lots of charges there. And it was trialled as a city with all the charges. And uh, it... it it is a fantastic place to be if you've got an EV. Um, but in a in Milton Keynes shopping centre there, they've got um, a place called the EV Experience Centre. Have you heard of that one, John? Uh, very briefly, I've heard of it a couple of years ago, I admit, but um, never anything more since, but I'm not down there very often. Well, what they, what they do there, and they have these, uh, they call them EV gurus, and they're, they're just friendly people, and they've got a number of EVs in the little shop forecourt and they've got some outside in the car park and basically they 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 have no agenda they're not working for a deal they're not really selling anything they're educating people about evs and and they allow people to to book and have a free 20 minute test drive in a range of evs ah right yes that'll be why i've heard of them yeah yeah Uh, yeah, that's that's a good idea i I went down there myself to see what it was all about and i drove an i3 last year and i was just i'd never driven one i wanted to try the i3 very impressed with it by the way folks you know it's uh well, we make jokes about bmw drivers but really i'd love an i3 <laughs> shh, shh, don't but tell um <laughs> so and, and also they hire evs out i think for a week um, maybe maybe a little longer than that but the idea is that people try them for, for a week for about I don't know, 80 to 100 pound um but uh, you know these people just, they're doing something different that's, they're, they're that, not got an agenda that's not but 80 to 100 pound to yeah. hire a car for a week. It's not bad. It cost me more than that to hire one on holiday, and that's not an EV. Yeah, and I apologise again. <laughs> I'm not a big one for fact-checking, as you've probably all gathered already. But uh, <laughs> um, I know it's there or thereabouts. Got better things to do at that time. <laughs> but, um, like I said, I just thought they, they're now just turning two years old. I think I'm just fantastic. Um, loving what you do. There should be more of it. And um, I just wanted to, to give them a, a bit of love. I think it's a great idea. It's um, it's it's almost like I mean I, I don't know very much about the place other than what you've told me, but it sounds like that someone's basically taking it of their own uh, volition, if that's the word, to to just to 
to put something out there. I mean, it's the kind of thing where maybe you'd expect um, BMW car dealerships, maybe they should be doing something like that. You know, obviously with their own cars, if you like, but hey, want to try our new our new i3 or whatever it is at the time, um, you know, hire one for a week or borrow one for 20 minutes, that kind of thing. It's almost like they're doing the EV sales people's jobs for them. Not that there are uh, EV salesmen, but you know what I mean? It's but Ed, you make a good point there, John. Is a lot. Uh, one of the biggest criticisms of a lot of people looking to buy an EV is that some of the dealers don't have the staff trained and that there's not always the knowledge. Uh, and, mm. you know, there are exceptions to this. I'm not going to tar all dealers with the same brush. But there are a heck of a lot of dealers out there that could do a lot better in training some of their staff. Yeah, I think the problem is, is, is well, generally speaking, it's it's new, isn't it, really? I mean, fuel, petrol fuel cars, diesel fuel cars have been around for, what, a couple of hundred years, probably? I don't, I don't know. But EVs, relatively speaking, you know, you're talking... 2000 onwards is when they started really being main place that's probably why you know people know cars people are, b- are born and growing up around cars they know what cars are like and then the electric ones are still rather new so i don't know maybe it's just hesitancy maybe it's just just uncertainty but yeah and you I'm, can kind of see why i'm sure that's going to be addressed but i just mm. I thought these guys did this some love to your birthday absolutely well done guys you're, you're, you're certainly got our respect yeah that's the electric vehicle experience center in milton Keynes. Uh, they've got a great website you find them on, and uh, just wanted to talk about EV meets and we talked earlier on about EV clubs camaraderie I've mentioned a lot of uh, the EV community in the earlier part of this podcast and um, I just wanted to say that um, there's lots of EV meets coming up in your area um, we've got the big one EVs in the park 24th of August and uh, Craig picked me up on the fact that I'd said that I thought tickets were about sold um, they probably are now, to be fair, but uh, <laughs> there were still spaces left. So yeah, apparently, I think they're only limited by the size of the field, and being that that field is absolutely humongous, it's about probably a couple of miles square. To sell out, we'd have to do <laughs> extremely you well. I think Craig <laughs> said there's some of space slots for 300 cars, but uh, it's all over Twitter. There's a website. It, look for EVs in the park on Twitter. If you've got any questions, have a look on the website as well. I'm sure that's got updates. So that's the big one. That's the big meeting. But again, we were talking about camaraderie in clubs. Just about all the clubs up and down have got meets going on. Uh, Sussex EVs on the 11th of August. Hampshire EVs, 31st of August. Southwest on the 8th of September. Norfolk, the 22nd. Kent, the 29th. Just to mention some. Now, if you're in any of those areas, and I've just pricked your attention, drop me an email on... Yorkshire EV Club at gmail.com. We don't currently have a meeting in the pipeline, but we will have after August. And um, any area that you want to know about, I'll be happy to find you all the relevant information on that and send it to you. Or get us on Twitter. We're on Twitter at, at EV Yorkshire. Happy to put you in touch with people in your area if you want to find out more. And let's point out that these EV meets aren't just for EV drivers, they want people to come along to learn, they'll educate you. Uh, and you get to sit and look at an EV if you haven't got really under the skin of one you know these people are welcoming and friendly they have cake good cake I'm told cake um, I'm sold yes. <laughs> just, uh, just a quick mention of the website as well we um, I think this, this week just gone we've just uh, well we've got we've got, got a web domain uh, got a website in production on the um, uh, on the the internet it's amazing this internet thing isn't it but yes uh, yorkshireevclub.co.uk there's just a holding page there at the moment but obviously the more we talk about EVs and all that kind of stuff we're going to probably be filling a, a bit of detail on there as well so in the future you know where to go good thing about the whole page has got links ex- to all of our social media instagram will be on there shortly as well um, so you can just use that as a, as a click to to all of the other places just a reminder podcast currently going to be on soundcloud and youtube but we are working on all of the all of the others and i think that's it that's that's goodbye from me darren and goodbye from me thank you very much for listening bye bye now